going on fam? It's your favorite entrepreneur, Basemental. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are enjoying the series of Mulgamite. This is going to be episode 3. And in this episode, the newest character I developed is named Taru Noir. And if you're familiar with two of my favorite series, which I think are two of the dopest series to be made in terms of anime, is Naruto and Soul Eater. Taru Noir is made up of Naruto and Blackstar. I, I toyed with the name a bit so I can get something that sounded really cool to me. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're checking out my other episodes. Some of them are actually going to bleed out a story. That seems to be where this is going. So, hope you're going to like, comment, share, subscribe. And most importantly, feel froggy enough to hop on that notification bell. And if you're not feeling froggy, stay on your lily pad. Alright fam? So we're going to get into the video about Teru Noir. To explain... Haru's character, we gotta, of course, give him a bit of a backstory. And I got his name because I recognize a lot of the similar letters that Blackstar and Naruto have, as well as the word letters that were different, and I just kind of ran with them. They both have T, A, and R in their names, but then Naruto is the only one with a U in his name. So Taru became his name, and then Noir to keep black because of Blackstar. Taru's backstory extends from his father, and his name is Maito Blanc. Uh-huh. See what I did there? It was good to say it out loud. Maito Blanc was a leader of Star Clan. Star Clan were kaiju hunters. Now, if you're familiar with Naruto as well as Soul Eater, the sort of big bads in both worlds are the Jinchurikis, and the Kishins, or the Tail Beasts in the Kishins. They make Kaiju in this universe, okay? Not a whole lot, but they're definitely different types. And in this case, you're gonna learn about two of them. And Maito, being the leader of a clan, of course, at some point started wanting to gain more power and control over the lands. Because if they could hunt these great Kaiju and the different forms, they should be able to control basically the whole world. So he began uh, this sort of insane raid of just killing everything. He started killing and absorbing kaijus, he started eating human souls, and he started devouring animal souls as well. Everything became up for grabs. And he gained a lot of power from all of the energy he stored. And in the process of gaining this energy and storing it, it started to develop tails on his body. Develop these tails that sort of always stuck out. It, they were real, but they were just energy. They weren't, people started fearing the kaiju hunters instead of, you know, being proud of them. Like, oh, they, they, they hunt the kaiju, they keep us safe and yada, 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 so on and so forth. And in the process of him becoming this super powerful kaiju, um, the uh, Death Leaf Academy, finally stopped him. And in stopping him, the night he died, he did what most clan, most, most other star clan do, which is pass on their powers and abilities so it gets stronger and kind of grows into the next generation. And the next generation for Maito was Taru. So on Taru's birthday, he got a very, very painful and rude awakening. First, do me a favor, if this story is making sense, if you're liking it, if you're liking the character design so far, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I wanna know, I'm down for the challenge. It's gonna be so much fun. I, I really do enjoy combining these characters. It's a nice challenge for me. Like, it is not limited. Let me know anime I have not seen. I will go check it out. Let's get it. I'm down to create more of these amalgamites. So, let's do that. Do that for me. Please. I'd appreciate it. Moving on. First, he got uh, a lot of techniques and everything sort of crammed into his head as a child. I do literally mean crammed into his head because the right eye that you see in the picture at the final image actually has a star in it. The star symbol is how they pass down their abilities. His got shoved directly into his eye when he was basically a newborn. So yeah, that's us a painful awakening. 
in the process of passing down all the techniques and abilities he had developed, he also passed down the kaiju power. Who <laughs> is now a kaiju by birth. And all this power is going to is naturally going to be his. But I also didn't mention that his father was a two-part kaiju. And he carried another form of kaiju with him as a weapon. She also comes from Soul Eater. I thought it was cool to mess with the Meister and weapon dynamics as long as what happens in Naruto. So this is what we got. You know how like Excalibur is a weapon that chooses you? Tsubaki's story, which I kind of have to tell you, is she wanted to be immortal. She gave up her body and her soul and placed them inside a weapon, essentially making her immortal. Soul and mind were sort of tweaked a bit and it became a bit dark but she could pick and choose who she wanted to wield her. And whoever picked her up had to have a balance of a strong soul and strong energy. If you don't have one or the other, she would essentially consume you through that sort of gap. So if you had a strong soul, but weak energy, she would always tease you with, I can give you more power. If you give me a piece of your soul. And of course people fell for it and eventually she was eating souls. In the reverse, you have all this power, but your soul is so weak. So she would drain them of all their energy and then take their soul. If you have both, she basically just becomes normal Tsubaki. And in this case, Taru lucked out. And he happened to have both strong energy and strong soul. His father, not so much, which is the main reason why he went down the path of the kaiju. Tsubaki was then passed on to his son. And this in turn unlocked a lot of her different weapon forms like Tsubaki and Soul Eater. <laughs> this happened on Taru's birth night, if it sounds familiar. As the story goes on and he grows up, Taru then becomes a kaiju hunter at Death Leaf Academy. Everyone in like the entire Death Leaf Academy is petrified of this guy because everyone knows he's a kaiju they know what happened to his parents and everything they also know he talks to a weapon which also basically signifies the weapons kaiju with Tsubaki now that she has a soul strong enough to you know control her she also becomes Taru's best friend because again he's talking to a weapon everyone knows he's a kaiju so that's the only person he could really talk to. So also telling him stories about his father and things of the past and how she became who she is and so on and so forth, right? And I thought that'd be an interesting relationship. It sounds kind of crazy to be best friends with a katana blade that changes into like maybe four or five different other weapons. But it sounds really cool to me. So everyone's afraid of that. And he's just like, I'm... I just, I'm not even a, like, I'm not even that kind of person. I got all of this stuff, but I, I didn't choose it. It was just, it, it's what happened to me. It was given to me. Since everyone wants to be afraid of me, I'm going to make everyone love me. So, in taking that route, he decides at some point in time, I am going to become head death kaiju hunter. So he dedicated himself to crazy, crazy types of training, constantly working on his abilities, developing new ones, working to control that those extra, that extra amount of energy he has, because, and really focusing and listening to Tsubaki, as well as another character I haven't introduced yet, and training with uh, Makora, as well as Kid. You haven't met Kid yet. I'm be, I'm be redrawing him, so that we can you know catch up with the other two, but they become partners. All three of them. And I'm not gonna tell you the fourth character because that one's coming up. Continuing. Learn from everyone who's mentored him and all of that good stuff. And decides he's going to transcend God. And that is the end of this story of Taru Noir. And if you know Naruto in Soul Eater, know this story. Sounds very familiar. So I hope you enjoyed. Taru's story. There will be more coming. Uh, but for now, 
It's your favorite entrepreneur, Basin Mental. Thank you for stopping by the channel. I hope you like commenting, sharing, and subscribing, and feeling froggy enough to hit that notification bell. And if you're not, put your still on your lily pad, but still hit the subscribe button. All right, I will see y'all in the next video. Peace. It's all you need to do